Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I want to talk about the three biggest mistakes I made while building the MVP for my new startup. And I have sort of a unique take, I think, because I previously ran a bootstrapped SaaS company for the past four years, and I'm also a senior software engineer. So going into this startup, I sort of had a head start because I knew how to build tech that scales. And I also know the sort of ins and outs of what to look out for and the sort of gotchas that might come up years down the line when it comes to running a tech company. Now, if I had to go back in time, I would make sure that I fix these things or for my next startup, I'm gonna make sure I don't make these three same mistakes again. So to give you some context, this is what my startup looks like. It is a simple website that allows advertisers to find creators and pretty much uh, use advanced searches and advanced analytics and stuff like that to find the proper creators. Because right now, a lot of advertisers are just hand going through a bunch of profiles, throwing money at the problem by like testing out 50 different creators at a time for only one of them to work out. So I thought we might build a platform to help solve that. And you can see it has a very, very, very basic style and aesthetic and a front page. Um, if you go to profile lookup, you can just simply look up someone's Instagram profile. It will show you a bit of stats, maybe some ads they've done in the past um, and similar creators based on audience and similar creators based on uh, actual stuff they've made. So it's a very basic application. And if you want to see the tech stack I used to build it, I have a link in the description of the video I made about that. But the first mistake I made, number one, was that we didn't talk to enough customers. More specifically, we stopped talking to customers after we built the product. So we went out and I'm a creator. So I sort of had a couple marketing friends and I found some people on LinkedIn and we talked to a bunch of marketers to isolate what problem we wanted to solve. And once we talked to a bunch of them and isolated what that was, we sort of went heads down and started building. We looked at what was possible to build with the data we were getting from the Instagram API. We looked at all the stuff that we could possibly build that has already been done before and whether they had traction. And we sort of got stuck in this rabbit hole of just building, seeing what was possible, building, seeing what was possible. And by the time we came out of it, we realized that a lot of the people that we initially messaged were down to try out the new feature, but we then had to start outreaching to a whole bunch of people. And it took us around five weeks to fully build and flesh out our MVP. And it could have been a lot better when we launched it if we actually had a bunch of people lined up ready to use it. And if we just kept reaching out to maybe 5, 10, 15 people every single day, we would have had like almost 50 users just ready to use the application by the time we were launched. And that could have been huge. It also could have sort of given us an idea of what we could have gone into and what we could have coded while we were coding it. So we could have like gotten some feedback while we were building it instead of just learning about the customer, building for five weeks, and then and learning about the customer again once they try it out and tell us that they might not like our features. Which brings me to the second mistake, which was we let the technology define our priorities. And that came in sort of two ways. The first way was that we sort of saw all the things that was possible with OpenAI's API. We saw all the things that were possible with the Instagram API, and we sort of just let our minds go loose. Instead of focusing on maybe one or two unique solutions to the problem we were trying to solve, we sort of just built a bunch of features and we just put all those features into our initial launch and cast this giant wide net. And as a result, we ended up launching later. And when we tested it with our initial users, we saw that only one to two of those features out of maybe the 10 that we actually launched with was something that was really useful for them. On one hand, it's really hard to find product market fit usually. So even if one thing resonates with the user, that's already a huge win on the launch of your MVP, because then you have an idea of what your actual um, product market fit could look like, and you can build in that direction. But on the other hand, we did delay launching for quite some time because we were trying to support so many features. And that pretty much came down to the fact that we were just playing around with the tech and we were like, oh my goodness, this is possible with like OpenAI's API. Why don't we build this? Oh my God, we could build this. Wouldn't it be so cool if we built that? But instead we should have just been like, okay, let's build this. Go back to the people we've talked to, see if it solves their problem. If it doesn't, we ask them what might or why doesn't it solve their problem. We learn from it. We think about it. We build something else and you iterate like that. That way you are sort of on that path to find that little magical box of product market fit a lot faster than just going off in random directions that come from your mind, which isn't very helpful unless you yourself are literally the customer. And the second way we let it dictate it was that there were a lot of things that um, were actually not viable that we've heard people wanted. So one example is we know for marketers, getting the location of an Instagram user's audience is super important. They wanna know if I'm paying this influencer to advertise for me, that they are at least advertising to people that are in the same country or within the same state as me. And we couldn't actually pull that because of the 
limitations on the Instagram API. And there were a lot of sort of like hacky things you could do, like maybe trying to scrape that information from the followers and stuff like that. But we ended up not going down that route and it's still something that we need to eventually implement. And there is a balance between implementing what you can with what you have and trying to find sort of a hacky workaround to get something that's really important to your users. And I don't think we found that balance and we let what we had access to sort of dictate the direction that we took the product and the features we tried to build when um, maybe we shouldn't have done that. And only time can tell, but I sort of feel like we're going to end up having to cross those bridges anyways um, as time goes on. So we're going to keep you updated on that one. And the third mistake is that we weren't embarrassed enough to launch the product. There's this whole saying that you should be embarrassed by your first MVP launch. And if you've launched an MVP and you're not embarrassed, you've launched too late. And I had this going into things in the back of my mind and I still sort of didn't adhere to it. On one hand, we are still sort of launching a bit early. So things are not as like um, robust as I would have liked them to be. But on the other hand, I did spend like two and a half weeks on building the user, the, like the UI design essentially on Figma here. Let me uh, show you what I'm talking about over here. You can see that I went ahead and like, we had really, really bad designs. Like here is what our site used to look like. And like, it's not great. Like it, it, it's enough to get by and probably test with some initial users, but I'm like, you know what? I want to make it so that it's super easy to build stuff in the future. I want everything on the site to have a consistent feel. So I went ahead and I spent like two and a half weeks um, in total building out a, the Figma designs and like getting st like standardizing everything and then b coding the whole website to actually match the Figma designs. But if you watch the last video I made about how to use Figma for developers, you'll see that this will actually like allow us to move really quickly when we want to add pages in the future, but it costed around two to two and a half weeks of launching. And I think every moment that you are in an unlaunched state is sort of like a lot of time loss and a lot of potential feedback, a lot of potential customers you could be talking to. And I think that is the most important thing. We can always hire another developer or another UX dev designer in the future to help us with these designs, but we can't always go back in time and launch sooner and get traction earlier. And I think with a startup, um, every single second counts. So I would probably maybe have settled for a worse UX design, maybe not even making a Figma. And yes, it would have been tech debt that would have had to be crossed later down the road anyways, but I think it might've been worth um, launching earlier to actually forego having that tech debt. So, and yeah, I thought these were three unorthodox things. The first time I built an MVP for my last startup, it was a completely different three things that I learned when building that MVP. Um, but this time, because I've done it before, a lot of the problems were more with how we chose to operate as opposed to like anything related to the actual tech. And I thought that would be a unique insight. And if you want to learn things that I've learned from making this MVP, let me know. And maybe I'll make a video about that tomorrow. And yeah, I'm making a lot of videos about my startup journey. I also have a bunch of random videos on just tech and like the tech world and commentary um, as a whole. I still don't know what I want to make videos about. I'm like in this gray zone. So if you have any ideas of content that you like seeing, let me know in the comments and I'll probably try it out. I'm just doing a whole bunch of random stuff similar to the way I'm trying to build my startup. And I'll see you guys in the next video.